Johnny Diamond there. A close ally of Donald Trump is due to appear in court in Florida shortly after being arrested as part of an investigation into Russian interference in the 2016 election. Roger Stone, who was a political advisor to the president, is facing allegations of obstructing official proceedings, making false statements and witness tampering. Well, let's go to our correspondent in Washington, Jane O'Brien. Uh, we're keeping an eye on the core building right now because he's due to appear any moment. But who is he, Jane? How big a deal is this? Well, it's a huge deal, Simon. He was a very close uh, advisor to President Trump during the campaign. He's known him for a very, very long time, and he's been around politics in Washington for decades. He was also an advisor to Richard Nixon, and according to the indictment, actually has a tattoo of Richard Nixon on his back. Um, so this is an example of the net of the, the special counsel inquiry into Russian meddling and possible collusion tightening even further around uh, confidence of President Trump. Roger Stone is now the sixth person to be indicted as part of this probe. But the, the main thing that's catching everybody's eye in the indictment is um, these allegations that when he lied about his contacts with WikiLeaks, um, he also lied about his contacts with senior members of the Trump campaign. He said he had no contact, where in fact he did. And there is even mention of a high-ranking official from the Trump campaign. And that's what's got Washington guessing yet again who these people might be that Roger Stone was in contact with. Well, guessing, I'm, I'm guessing <laughs> that we're talking about the President of the United States. But I, in, in terms of the indictments, what else can we read into? What sort of things Roger Stone may be into here? Well, as if you, you will remember that these charges arise from uh, the WikiLeaks dumping of emails that were hacked from the Democratic Party itself. Um, Russia has been blamed for the actual hacking. The emails were passed on to WikiLeaks. Um, and this is the sort of thing that uh, Roger Stone was texting and messaging to various people, referring to kryptonite on Hillary. Hillary's campaign will die this week. The payload is still coming. And the recipient of some of those messages, uh, he then threatened this witness that he's accused of intimidating and, and compromising. He called him, you're a rat, a stoolie, you backstab your friends, run your mouth, my lawyers are dying to rip you to shreds and prepare to die expletive and Roger Stone then apparently threatened this person's dog gives you an idea of the sort of person you're dealing with yeah those were words you weren't expecting to utter this morning when you got up weren't they uh, I'm just looking at the court building right now there does seem to be some excitement uh, from reporters it looks as though something may be about to happen I know you're looking at these pictures as well but of course Indeed. also also watching them is going to be one Donald J Trump and presumably a bit nervous well, it, it certainly puts the pressure on him. Um, I mean, his uh, press secretary, Sarah Sanders, uh, earlier this morning was saying that, look, these charges have nothing to do with Donald Trump. And indeed, he is not named in this indictment. Uh, and there is no mention of the central uh, focus of the inquiry, which is collusion and conspiracy. This is not mentioned. Roger Stone is accused of lying to Congress and tampering with witnesses. But it, as I said, it is these, the mention of the senior officials. Uh, and we've also had a comment from uh, Roger Stone's own lawyer saying that the spectacle of an early morning arrest was absurd. You, we had very dramatic pictures of the FBI turning up at Roger Stone's house in, in Florida in a pre-dawn raid. Uh, and he said that Roger will be released this afternoon. He's pretty confident about that. Uh, we'll head to Washington at some point and will enter a plea of not guilty. Uh, so he's clearly feeling quite defiant about it, but uh, the president himself under pressure, but not accused in this indictment. That's very important to mention. Right. I'm just looking at these pictures. I'm going to be guided by you. What do you think? Do we pull away or shall I just stick with you for a minute? Oh, my goodness. Lot, hard to tell. There's a lot of activity from the cameraman. That's what I would normally go by. Somebody coming down the steps, not quite sure who that is. Um, maybe we should see if he's going to say anything. No, he's not. I would uh, I'd come back, Simon. I'm here. I'd there's, come back. There's an invitation. Jane, I will come back. I shall talk to you later. Thank you very much. That's Jane O'Brien there in Washington. And we'll be going back to her later. Roger Stone, a former advisor to President Trump, is due to appear in court in Florida shortly. He faces charges including witness tampering and making false statements. Greek MPs have voted narrowly to accept the new name of the country's northern neighbour as the Republic of North Macedonia. The parliament in Athens agreed by 153 votes to 146 to approve the name despite widespread opposition from the public. Let's take you now to uh, 
Fort Lauderdale in the United States. Um, we're going to pull away from those headlines because uh, there's movement outside the court. Let's just, uh, I think he's saying four to five minutes is what he just said. Four to five minutes uh, before Roger Stone emerges from it. So we'll take you back uh, as soon as there is uh, some uh, development there. But four to five minutes, I think, was the warning we were hearing there in terms of an appearance of uh, Roger Stone. I can see Joan O'Brien in Washington watching those pictures as well. So we'll bring her in and we'll talk to those pictures as soon as we see them. Well, we're still awaiting the arrival of Roger Stone at the uh, district court in Fort Lauderdale. There does seem to be some uh, anticipation that he's about to arrive there. But in the last few moments, uh, President Trump has been tweeting uh, about the developments the last few moments and this is the um, this is the arrest at the at dawn this morning and Donald Trump has tweeted uh, we've got problems with the with our system but I'll just tell you what he said he says greatest witch hunt in the history of our country no collusion border coyotes drug dealers and human traffickers are treated better he said who alerted CNN to be there? CNN has some remarkable images of the moment of arrest with a large number of FBI agents, many of them armed, in that dawn raid at, at his home this morning in Fort Lauderdale. So that's uh, the latest from Donald Trump, who's no doubt watching what we're watching, which is the uh, steps outside the court, outside the, uh, uh, the courthouse in Fort Lauderdale, where reporters are still waiting for Roger Stone to emerge. Uh, that is the scene and we'll take you over to there as soon as the court hearing gets underway. Uh, you're watching after. Roger Stone, a former advisor to President Trump, is appearing in court in Florida this afternoon facing charges including witness tampering and making false statements. Next, the other main stories on BBC News at 5. Roger Stone, a former advisor to President Trump, is freed on bail after being arrested by the FBI on charges of witness tampering and making false statements. And this is the scene right now, live outside the courthouse in Fort Lauderdale, where we're expecting Roger Stone to come out in the next few minutes and speak to the press. A close ally of Donald Trump has been freed on bail this evening after being arrested as part of an investigation into Russian interference in the 2016 U.S. presidential election. Roger Stone, who was a political advisor to the president, has denied allegations of obstructing official proceedings, making false statements and witness tampering. Well, president Trump again denounced the investigation as, quote, the greatest witch hunt in American history. Uh, our correspondent Jane O'Brien joins us now uh, with the latest from Washington. Uh, so Jane, another arrest, uh, but how significant do you think this one could turn out to be? Well, this is hugely significant, not least because Roger Stone is a very close advisor to President Trump and has been around Washington for decades. He even uh, advised President Nixon at one point and has apparently, according to the indictment, a tattoo of President Nixon on his back. Uh, but he knows all about the Trump organization, the, the Trump campaign and President Trump himself. And what is causing the biggest stir in Washington is not the, the indictment itself, which is that he lied to Congress about his contacts with WikiLeaks and tried to uh, tamper with a witness, but that he also lied about his contacts with senior officials within the Trump campaign. Now, we don't know who those officials are. One of them is described as high ranking, uh, and it's caused a, a lot of controversy here. Uh, he's appeared in court. Uh, we are expecting him to speak, um, but uh, he is expected to deny the charges, but clearly this is a very significant arrest in this ongoing investigation into potential collusion with Russian efforts to meddle in the presidential election. Uh, a typical defiance from Donald Trump with that tweet saying the greatest witch hunt in the history of our country, no collusion. 
Well, Donald Trump has been calling this probe a, a witch hunt pretty much ever since it started. Um, and he has said that there is no collusion. This was reiterated by the White House press secretary this morning, who said rightly that Donald Trump is not mentioned in this uh, and that the indictment does not mention conspiracy or collusion. It's about lying to Congress and obstruction. Um, however, Nancy Pelosi, the House Speaker, had this to say. It's, uh, it's very interesting to see the kinds of people that the President of the United States has surrounded himself uh, with. And this uh, connection to the integrity of our elections is uh, obviously something we have to get the truth about. But it's also bothersome to see uh, his connections to Russia and the President's suggestions that we should question whether we should be in NATO, which is a dream come true uh, for Vladimir Putin. Nancy Pelosi, the House Speaker there. Well, uh, other Democrats, Mark Warner, who is the ranking member of the Senate Intelligence Committee, which has had its own investigation going, uh, said it's clear from this indictment that those contacts with WikiLeaks happened at least with the full knowledge of and appear to have been encouraged by the highest levels of the Trump campaign. So expect a lot more questions from Democrats over this. Jane, thank you very much indeed. And let's just uh, take a quick look at then at the scene at that courthouse in Fort Lauderdale, uh, where you can see some of the reporters waiting outside, waiting for Roger Stone. Um, they've been told he will come out and speak to them uh, potentially in the next few minutes. So uh, we'll bring that live to you, of course, if, uh, if we do see Roger Stone there on the steps of the uh, courthouse there in Fort Lauderdale. Roger Stone, a former advisor to President Donald Trump, is freed on bail after being arrested by the FBI on charges of witness tampering and making false statements. So do you think she's saying that the EU just might agree to this um, without any sort of change to the Article 50 process? It all refers to whether or not we're ready for Brexit Day. So if you work on the assumption, and it's a, it's, it's a, in some ways it's an assumption that takes a lot of imagination just now, but if you imagine the Prime Minister does get Parliament's backing within the next few weeks for what she's proposing, all that legislation has to go through. If, I think Andrea, Andrea Leadsom is saying, if you go back to Brussels and say, we've got the deal in place, we've agreed everything, we've just not managed to get every element of our own domestic legislation ready, can we wait a few more weeks to make sure that there's not some gap in the legal system or there's not some issue with trade because we've not got our own trade bill through or something like that? She thinks that Europe would be fairly open to that. And in many ways, I suppose that sounds quite obvious. If you've sorted the deal, why would you let a technicality get in the way? OK, I'm uh, going to have to interrupt you there, Nick, because Roger Stone is appearing in the United States, that uh, former advisor to Donald Trump, close ally of Donald Trump here, has been arrested by the FBI as part of this investigation into Russian interference in the 2016 US election. And to see if he's going to say something, we're expecting him to. He has denied allegations of obstructing official proceedings, making false statements and witness tampering. This is Fort Lauderdale outside the courthouse there. And Donald Trump has again denounced the investigation as the greatest witch hunt in American history. He speaks for himself. You know that Roger Stone has always spoken for himself. He's never been shy about telling his story. He is innocent. We're going to defend this case and we're going to win this case. But let me start out by saying that the spectacle this morning was completely unnecessary. Everyone knows where Roger Stone is. He's not in hiding. The spectacle this morning with a SWAT team breaking into his house, searching the house, scaring his wife, scaring his dogs, completely unnecessary. A telephone call would have done the job and Mr. Stone would have appeared. But let me let Roger speak for himself. There's nothing to hide, he has nothing to hide, and he's spoken before and he'll speak to you now. Roger. 
The charges today relate in no way to Russian collusion, WikiLeaks collaboration, or any other illegal act in connection with the 2016 campaign. I am falsely accused of making false statements during my testimony to the House Intelligence Committee. That is incorrect. Any, uh, any error I made in my testimony would be both immaterial and without intent. Uh, I find it disturbing that the special counsel's office released a press release prior to informing my attorneys that I would be charged today. This morning, uh, at the crack of dawn, 29 FBI agents arrived at my home with 17 vehicles with their lights flashing uh, when they could simply have contacted my attorneys and I would have been more than willing to surrender voluntarily. Uh, they terrorized my wife, my dogs. Uh, I was uh, taken to the FBI facility, uh, although I must say the FBI agents were extraordinarily courteous. Uh, I will plead not guilty to these charges. I will defeat them in court. I believe this is a politically motivated investigation. Uh, I am troubled by the political motivations of the prosecutors. Uh, and as I have said previously, there is no circumstance whatsoever under which I will bear false witness against the president, nor will I make up lies to ease the pressure on myself. I look forward to being fully and completely vindicated. Next, did you in any way cooperate with the special counsel's office? Did you in any way cooperate with the special counsel's office? Uh, since I was not contacted prior uh, to the charges today, my lawyers have not talked to the special prosecutors. I don't want to address that question, but I have made it clear I will not testify against the president. The president really did you because I would have to bear false witness the against him. Will you work with the prosecutors? The uh, I will be... Uh, appearing for an arraignment in D.C. next week, and I'll address those questions at that time. Roger, the president said that you had done and that. What do you think he meant by that? Well, I intend to tell the truth. I have told the truth through this entire proceeding, uh, and I will prove that in a court of law. How strong are you going to ask the president, 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 president for a pardon? Uh, I am one of his oldest friends. I am a, uh, a fervent supporter of the president. I think he is doing a great job of making America great again. Roger, did anyone tell you to contact in the Trump campaign to contact WikiLeaks? Uh, no, I've addressed that before. That is incorrect. Well, Roger, if you look at the indictment, it suggests that if you were convicted, do you think the president held hard in you? Pardon me? If you, if you were convicted, do you think the president would pardon you? The only person I have advocated a pardon for is Marcus Garvey. NBC News. Sir. The yes. question is, did you in any way work with the Russians to help President Trump? Uh, uh, categorically, categorically not. No, absolutely not. And the prosecutor, the special prosecutor, we got you, Roger. Is gathering we got your back, Roger. Will you in any way, with, with, with all due respect, I haven't even had a chance to read the indictment. You haven't even read the indictment. Correct. My attorneys have. I have not had that opportunity. So will you, will you, will you help the prosecutor to answer his question? I will address those questions next week in Washington, D.C. Roger, Roger. Thank you. if you didn't do nothing wrong, what do you think you hear? So that was Roger Stone, a close ally of Donald Trump, um, a former political advisor to Donald Trump, uh, appearing on outside Fort Lauderdale courthouse there, having been arrested as part of the investigation into Russian interference in the uh, last US presidential election, holding up his arms there aloft, as you can see, as if uh, in victory, saying he will plead not guilty, he will defeat them in court, a politically motivated case. He said he's got 
His lawyer said he's got nothing to hide um, and that he is falsely accused. And uh, Roger Stone also interestingly saying, uh, and his lawyer also agreeing with that, that it was a, a completely over the top um, arrest operation by the FBI. 29 FBI agents, he said, uh, went to his home this morning in 17 vehicles. Uh, they terrorized his wife and dogs, he said, and they could easily have just uh, arranged by phone for him to surrender himself. Uh, to the authorities. Anyway, that was Roger Stone in Fort Lauderdale. Much more on that uh, throughout the evening here on BBC News. OK, we're going to turn our attention to all the day's sports news now. Holly Hamilton's got that for us. Hi, Holly. Hi there, Ben. Now, a long-time ally of President Donald Trump has been arrested in a dawn raid on his home in Florida. The political strategist Roger Stone faces seven charges in connection with the investigation into Russian meddling in the 2016 presidential election. He's now been released on bail and says he's innocent and claims the allegations against him are politically motivated. Our North America editor, John Sopel, has the story. Roger Stone, provocateur, flamboyant, lifelong Republican operative, specialist in dirty tricks, youthful aide to Richard Nixon, longtime friend and advisor to Donald Trump. And as of four o'clock this morning, when the FBI moved in mob-handed, the latest person to be arrested in the Mueller investigation into collusion between the Trump campaign and Russia. After Stone's court appearance, he emerged the very picture of defiance, echoing images of Richard Nixon. He wouldn't cut any deals, he won't speak against the president, he is going to fight. I will plead not guilty to these charges. I will defeat them in court. I believe this is a politically motivated investigation. Uh, I am troubled by the political motivations of the prosecutors. His indictment containing details of texts he'd sent that read as though they were taken from The Godfather or The Sopranos. To one he writes, You are a rat, a stoolie. You backstab your friends. I am so ready. Let's get it on. Prepare to die, expletive. The indictment alleges that Stone was the key conduit between Russia, Julian Assange's WikiLeaks and the release of thousands of stolen emails from the Democrat National Committee, deeply damaging to Hillary Clinton's campaign. Ahead of their release, Stone wrote to an associate, Big news Wednesday, now pretend you don't know me, Hillary's campaign will die this week. Throughout 2016, Stone was an ever-present figure. I met him at the Republican convention that summer. In Trump, they see somebody who gets things done, who talks straight, who isn't politically correct. Today, the White House was saying, so what? This has nothing to do with the president, has nothing to do with the White House. Um, and beyond that, I'm not going to get into Have the Have you spoken to the president? Forth. But though the president protests that the Mueller investigation is a hoax and a witch hunt, more and more key figures have been snared over their contacts with Russia and the lies they told to cover their tracks. What's clear is that the Mueller investigation has way, way more information than has so far been disclosed. How serious this is for the president, we'll find out when his report is eventually delivered. What's obvious is that it's more than nothing. John Sopel, BBC News, Washington.